Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield talking to the big stars, and it's not very often I'm excited to meet somebody who's gorgeous and talented and wealthy. Deborah Meaden, will you marry me? Oh, absolutely. After that intro, of course I'll marry you. <laughs> How are you? Have to tell my husband first, that's the only thing. Let's leave him out of this. We don't need to talk about him. I like you because you're funny and you're smart and you're quick and you're clever and you're rich. My ideal woman. Well, um, I'm very surprised to hear you say that because sometimes I look at myself on the den and I think, mm, <laughs> could lighten up a bit. Well, the thing is, though, you're truthful. You're the Simon Cow, really, if you don't mind me saying. You're the one that actually tells it as it is. Seems to me some of the guys sugarcoat it and are very nice to people, whereas you'll say, what's the point? And at the end of the day, you're a businesswoman. It's not your job to be nice, is it? Well, I actually think that it, that it's it's better to be honest and actually it's nicer to be honest because... To be dishonest can leave people thinking that they've got a really good business idea and they can waste an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money. I actually think I'm doing the right thing. I don't think business is very complicated, really. I think it's about finding the right opportunity, going in at the right time, not wasting money and getting on with it. It seems to me there's all these books out, especially at the moment. Everybody's telling everybody how to recreate the world and get it back on its knees. Ultimately, don't spend your money if you haven't got it. Alex, I cannot... You see, we're soulmates. <laughs> I cannot tell you. I spend my life saying business is not complicated. I actually think we've lost sight of that. I think if we kept kept hold of that, we probably wouldn't be in the problems we've got at the moment. It's not complicated. It's not easy. There's a difference between easy and simple. It's not easy. It's hard work. You know, you've got to know what you... you you've got to really, really put a lot of energy and enthusiasm into it, but it's not complicated. Is your best skill seeing a good opportunity and then going after it? Or is your best skill, once you've got it, making it successful and more successful? Well, I'd like to think, obviously, that I do both of those very well. But I think I, what I definitely do, I think I've got I think I've got pretty good judgment. And when I've decided on something, nothing gets in my way. And I'm a doer, you know. And actually, I come across so many people with really, really good ideas, but they don't know how to make it happen. They don't know what to do next. And all I say is, well, you take your first step, and then you take your next step, and then you take your next step. And before you know it, you've got a business. Is it starting small as well and not trying to run before you can walk? I see a lot of people investing millions into something that actually should have just had a little money, get it working, make sure it's successful and then let it grow. I think you're I think you're right not necessarily in terms of size. I mean you can invest millions, but I think the thing is understand what the core of your business and focus on that. What I see is people before they've established the core of their business running off all over the place, you know, well, let's try this and let's do that and 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 actually what they should have done is get the core right and then they can go off and do the other stuff, but they kind of move on too quickly. I've got a new idea that me and you are going to run this country. You're going to be prime minister. No, no, I'll be prime minister and you can be chancellor because you're the brain behind this. How are we going to sort this mess out around the world? Well, we've got a problem, you see, because I'd want to be Prime Minister. <laughs> we're, we're, we're falling out already. <laughs> this is like the real thing, isn't it? It's like the real thing. <laughs> what have they got to do? Because you're a smart lady, and I saw Donald Trump just the other day on Larry King, who's brought a book out about how to save the world. And he says right now, look, we've got to get on with it. Now is a good time to actually be a business person because you can invest and you can make a lot of money. How, though, do we sort out for average Joe? How do we get back on our feet? Do you know, I think the most important thing we've got to do is work our way through this. There are no... I, I sense we're looking for magic pills. I sense that everybody is looking for the thing that's going to do, that's going to change all this around. The truth of the matter is it, times are going to be tough. We need to get our heads down. We need to be very good at what we do. We need to provide good product. We need to provide good service. We need to sell it at the right price. And we just need to work our way out of this. I'm just thinking about the title of your book, which is... It's Common Sense Rules. Common Sense Rules. And I'm thinking to myself, rule one, I can't spend 50000 a year if I'm only earning twenty-five. You see, you're really very good. There you go. That's what my book says. <laughs> Why can't I bring out a book if I can work it out? But that's the point, isn't it, really? You've got to live within your means. And I'm a young person, and we don't. I mean, we've been brought up in this credit card society where you think, I want it, I'll have it. Never actually dawns on you, eventually it's got to be paid for. Well, I think you're right. I mean, the, tr the truth is that debt is also very important. You, uh, economies cannot grow without debt. But that's sensible debt. That's debt that can be serviced. And honestly, I think there are a lot of us who knew what was going on was completely unsustainable and everybody was saying it. Well, sure enough, the, 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 it was obviously going to happen and it has happened. 
Who's responsible? Is this somebody in America? Is this somebody over here? Or is this just something that was going to happen? Something cyclical almost? No, I'm not sure it's cyclical. I think this is this is, this is is as bad or even worse as, we, as we've seen for a long, long time. Who is responsible? I think all of us are responsible in, in some way. I think all of us knew. I heard so many people say house prices can't carry on going up you know it can't it can't carry on being this good but we all we all lived with it carrying on overheating so in in our own little way i think many many of us were responsible but actually that doesn't matter who's responsible isn't the issue the issue is how do we work our way out of this now and where do we go from here then? You're a businesswoman. Are you at this point investing? Are you just doing nothing? Are you taking your money out of things? Because you're smart. You're not going to let yourself be dragged down with everybody else, are you? Uh, what is interesting, and, and I've talked to a lot of other investors and they're doing a very similar thing. Do you know, I've invested in more businesses in the last six months than I had in the previous 12 months because there are some fantastic opportunities. The problem is people are finding it very, very difficult to raise money to start businesses, which means that good businesses are failing to start up. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's the smaller, small, medium enterprises that are actually going to work us out of this. It's important they get the cash. So I'm investing in really good ideas that are failing to get bank funding. Well, that's as far as I'm concerned, that's offered me some fantastic opportunity. What's good right now then? What are the kind of things that we should be investing in if we've got money? Well, crystal balls. I think crystal balls would be an absolutely fantastic thing to be investing in right now. Um, I don't think there's particularly one sector, although I do think that it's it, people are returning to safe. You know, we're, we're very... We're, when money is, is tight, when it's even more precious, we spend it on things that we really know and we really understand. So, you know, I'm not sure coming out with the latest, greatest, whizzy, worry is necessarily the right thing, but finding something that you could do better, that you could produce better, that could really genuinely solve a problem that we're experiencing, that's the type of thing that I'm investing in. You know, I think business is more about people than it is business because I look at you and almost... 100% of the time on Dragon's Den, you're more or less bought by the person who's talking to you than their idea. Could you ever invest in something if you didn't like the person? I don't say that I invest in the person. Now, when I, when I find good people, I employ them. But when I'm looking for an investment, the product has to be good. Because if the product is good and the person so-so, I can bolster up the person. I can put the the um, skills and the strengths in to actually bolster that business up. I think it's a real waste of good talent if you've got a good person who is spending, wasting their time trying to promote a poor product. So I'm actually probably the only dragon who says, actually, I don't just invest in the person. I am looking for a good product. If I get both, that's my moment. That's where I think, and that's where all of us kind of, you can see the light go on, all of us thinking, great combination. But actually, I need to see a good product or a good service. Maybe I'm wrong with this, but I can't remember one example where you appeared not to like the person and still invested. That's a that's interesting. No, you're if I don't trust or I don't like the person, I can't invest. But liking them isn't enough of a reason for me to invest in them. But you're actually, you have picked up absolutely on that, Alex. If I don't like them, and certainly if I don't trust them, no, I am not investing. It's as, as simple as that. You were being too hasty. The wedding is still on. You must you must calm down. This was going well. You tried to cause trouble. And we're back. We're okay, we're, we're back on form. So you've got this new book out then. How is your life? I mean, I've been reading about it, and you've got the 16 horses and room for a pony and the dogs and the cats. It sounds like you've got a lovely life. How busy are you day to day? Uh, I am a pretty busy person, but I, I, I'm a great believer in, you know, I, I'm as busy as I let myself be. I love, I, I'm just one of those people who likes being very busy all of the time. But I do say when I go home, and home is, is Somerset for me, and when I go home, I kind of take this big sigh and breathe out and, you know, and I go around and chat to all the animals and, 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 I, and I love it. But I love it because I also get the other side of life, which, which really gets me fired up and gets my adrenaline going. So and I spend quite a bit of time up in, in London or I spend quite a lot of time with my investments. Um, so so I'm and I'm pretty good at, at, at breathing out and thinking, no, I need a couple of days now. One of the things that always fascinates me when we talk media, people say ladies do not have the same chance as men in the media. And I say, hang on a minute, Oprah Winfrey is the number one person in the world. And then I hear people whinging, oh, women are not given a chance in business. Don't you think that's 99% of the time people who actually aren't that good making excuses? Because if you're good like you, you will be successful. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't really talk too much about the gender issue because I kind of ignore it. I mean, I've just got through life thinking if I'm good at what I do, I'll just put my head down, I'll be good at what I do, and sooner or later it will work and it will succeed. So I've only really had my experience. So my experience is, you know, just soldier on through, just keep doing what you're doing, be good at, be good at it, and sooner or later you'll succeed. I don't know whether it's a generational thing, but for me, I don't think people in 2009 give a toss. It's whether you're any good, and you clearly are, and you're confident, you're able to deliver what does sadden me in business is people who have got great ideas and no conviction because if you're not taken seriously it's hard to succeed isn't it uh, th- that is so true i mean if you don't believe in your product if you can't convince everybody not because you're shouting at them or banging on the table or saying this is the best thing but by the way you are people know when you absolutely completely believe in your product or your service and you know you don't need many words they can see it and if you don't believe they don't believe and one of the things I love about Dragon's Den is the humour within it. There's nothing better for me than when somebody comes who spent their entire life creating something that is so pointless it defies words and your reaction and those genuine moments of tears and laughter because you can't believe somebody has spent their entire life dedicating themselves to something so pointless. You're talking about the fingernail, false fingernails for cats, or possibly even the cucumber lid, aren't you? <laughs> was it the glove for when you're driving on the continent? That's brilliant. Yeah, that was the... My, mind you, if he got away with it, I mean, produce just split a pair of gloves and just use one of them to remind you. I mean, if he got away with it, clever guy. But he didn't. We rumbled him. <laughs> I love all that. You've obviously invested in a lot of people on the programme, and you seem to put your hand in your pocket more than most. What are you most proud of from the programme? Is there one product that you think, God, it was worth doing just for that. First of all, Alex, can I say publicly, thank you very much for recognising that. Do you know I get more comments about the fact I never invest, which I am staggered because actually, numerically, I have invested in more businesses in my time on the den. I'm watching and you I'm more like, closely. That's you what you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like. I would. I would publicly like to thank you for that. So thank you. Um, it's. I. I couldn't choose an investment. That'd be like asking me to choose my favourite child. I mean, I've had some real great successes, and the the trouble is, I mean. I've got um, the first chap that I ever invested in, which is the automated DJ system. Fantastic. You know, we're now licensed throughout the world. We're biggest music providers to the fitness industry. It's absolutely fantastic. But he's further down the track than Sterry Spray, who always said it was going to take two years to get their product tested and licensed. So all of them are at sort of different phases. I have to say, I am very pleased with all of my investments. I've had one failure. That's the only one I'm very sad about because it's sad on... It's a very sad human story and it's very sad that it hasn't worked out but but overall I've been absolutely chuffed to bits with my investments and there's no 100% in business is there I mean with staff as well you're gonna make mistakes it's as simple as that well, the truth of the matter is that we are working a very, I mean, the dragons are operating in a very high risk environment because often these people can't get funding elsewhere. So this is really the risky end. Now, I've got 10 dragons investments. If I've only got one failure, I am doing very, very well because in the world of, the word of attrition out there in the business world, that is an amazingly good hit rate. The great thing about the programme is that people keep coming. And what fascinates me is that in 2009, we've been going a while, there's still things that we haven't thought of. Does it ever cease to amaze you by how many people are always thinking of a way of us evolving and developing and moving forward? Because you would think we've thought of everything by now. I think it is fantastic. Us Brits are not short of ideas. Now, even if they're wacky ideas, it doesn't matter. You know, it's we're thinking and that is fantastic. Fantastic. We are definitely, as a nation, we are not short of ideas. I'm thinking of a new idea for me and you, and it's after we get married. I'm thinking, I don't know, a new radio station that we could put on together. I'd only need between 10 and 20 million pounds, because I'm going to be very cheap at about a million a year. What's the chance of you inventing an idea in a radio station that we can put on air and investing in my radio station? Well, bearing in mind that you and I were talking about getting married, I don't think a million pound a year is fair of you to take that out as a salary, Alex. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't take a pay cut, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> 
You see, we're having our second marital tiff. <laughs> so what exactly do you think I'm worth then? This could get very personal. Oh, I couldn't put enough zeros on the end of what you're worth, I'm sure. I'm going to take that as a no then. There's no investment in my radio station. No, I, I avoid... You see, I don't usually avoid questions when I avoid them. There's a reason. <laughs> Deborah, it's lovely talking to you. And congratulations on this new book. It's fun and it's interesting. And it really does put the finger on what we should all be doing, which is just common sense. It's sad in a way that you have to write this book, but that's why we're all in this blooming mess, isn't it? Well, the book was partly a response. People, the, do you know my top, my most common question ask, how do you, how, how do you get to be a success? And people almost want this, well, you do A, B, C, D, E, bang, bingo. It's not like that. What it is, it's, it's stuff that you should know. It's stuff that anybody in business should know, but really... What they do with that knowledge, that's what will make them successful or not. So it's like the toolbox. It's saying, there's all the tools. Now you pull them out at the right time. You apply them properly. Great to talk to you. Deborah Meaden is the big star of Dragon's Den. You're my favourite. And uh, she's got a brand new book out called Common Sense Rules. And it's simply that. Don't spend money if you haven't got it. Bravo. Deborah, thank you very much. Thank you. I've enjoyed that. Thank you.